Good morning, everyone. How are we doing? Great. Good to see all your beautiful faces. Thank you. And Zach? I'm not sure. <laughs> just teasing, Zach. I just saw you raise your hand. You threw, threw me off. Uh, hey, uh, if, uh, if this is your first time with us, we are so glad to have you here with us this morning, uh, worshiping. Uh, hopefully, you'll, uh, you'll come back and, and uh, get to know us a little bit, get to see what, uh, what we're about. If this isn't your first time with us, then welcome back. Uh, good to see you again. Uh, ready to, uh, to worship with you. Uh, kids, if you have your uh, sermon note sheets, Dustin, you ready for this? Yeah. All right. Um, you're going to listen for the word member today, um, a member being a part of something, right? We're going to talk about, about membership in, in the church. And so uh, if you have your, your sermon note sheet, you might uh, uh, fill out the number of times that I, I use that word. And if you need uh, extra help, I think the entire back is blank. So um, you can just keep, keep on going. Um, also, you'll find a QR code on there. That kind of goes along with what uh, they learned today in, in Pew Packers. And so um, uh, a little video for, uh, for them at, at the house as well. Um, we are in the, uh, the fifth week of a, a series that we're just calling uh, Biblical Church. We've been talking about uh, some of the characteristics, traits of a, uh, a church that we find in the pages of the New Testament. Just after the, the death and the burial and the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus, um, those, those early churches and what we find there, um, the traits that, that should be um, markers of a, an assembly, a local church um, founded by, by Christ, uh, following after what it is that, that he would have for us and what it would look like to be the bride of Christ in a, in a way that's honoring to him. And so um, we have talked about uh, scripture, right? The fact that, that, that a biblical church has to be based on the Bible. Um, we've talked about leadership, that the, the Lord calls men to lead um, a, 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 a local church and to be accountable um, for them and to them. Um, we, we talked about uh, the teaching that we unite around, uh, about doctrine. Um, and last week we talked about, about worship, um, the way that we are called to live our lives in, in worship of the God that we serve. Um, today we're talking about membership. And so um, let me just uh, say something that will get me in trouble right off the bat, okay? Dating is the worst, okay? Uh, I don't just say that because earlier this week we had a, a holiday that is centered around this, uh, this romantic love affection type thing. Um, I don't say that because um, on that holiday we have to find some new way to, uh, to try to be you know, appreciative of our loved ones that will just blow their hair back and be completely out of the ordinary. I don't say that because uh, the way that we always do that is by going to a restaurant, waiting for an hour to get a meal that's overpriced for whatever it is anyway. Um, I don't say that because I'm going to have to go out and get uh, you know, some flowers that are eventually going to die, regardless of how well you keep them or uh, whatever green thumb you might have. Right? I don't say any of that. I don't, say, I don't even say it because I am frugal, right? which some people would call cheap. But I, I'm, that's not why I'm saying um, that, that I, I don't like dating. Um, in fact... Uh, it, it's, it's probably more offensive than that, right? Um, dating is the worst because we live in a culture that has, has turned um, dating into this endless temptation, this endless uh, uh, going about the idea of getting married without ever actually getting married. And so it's this, this long, drawn-out process of, of coupling and decoupling, of, of preparing us for this idea of marriage but never really... Um, getting there, and, and what it does is kind of uh, gets us ready for divorce beforehand. Um, and and it, it, it gets us ready to, to say that we're together only to, to go apart when things get inevitably difficult and we get discontent and, and we move on from, from those relationships. And, and um, dating is the worst because we sometimes bring that same attitude toward the church. Um, and, and we think that I'll try this out until it gets difficult or until I become discontent, and then I'll move on, and I'll, I'll go find a different one, and then after that, a different one, and, and I'll just keep moving on um, time and time again. Um, but we are called the bride of Christ, right? We are called the body of Christ, and so there's something much more in the picture of what it means to come together as a local church than just um, dating each other for the time being. Um, there's something much more um, committed to that relationship if we, if we actually look in the pages of Scripture and see what it is that we are, are called to be. Um, it's, it's often been said that, that Christians will approach um, church like dating. 
Um, the, the American culture that we have, we just endlessly hop from one situation to the next, looking for the, the perfect temperature that we're looking for, looking for the perfect situation, the perfect grouping of people, and that is impossible um, to find. Uh, after all, uh, we're, we're still Christians, but we're still people, right? Uh, we still have all of the things that are our baggage in our, our own minds. We still have all of those things that, that, uh, that we bring into the situation that would corrupt it um, as well. Uh, a lot of times we hear the question, does it really matter? Like, does it matter if I'm a, if I'm a member of a church? Uh, like, what's the point of that, right? Um, what, do I, I don't want voting rights, so you know, why is it that I would, I would lock myself down to one church? I'm, I'm still a member of the, the big C, the global church, right? So I can just, I can just float wherever I want, and it, it, it doesn't really make all that big of a difference. I just, uh, I'll stay there until I get anxious, discontent, however that works, and, and I'll move on um, to the next. And uh, what I, I hope to show you today is that when we, when we take that approach, when we date the church for a time until we become discontent, um, we, we actually do a disservice um, to the church. We actually do a disservice to the, to the bodies of Christ, the small C churches, but also to the greater body of Christ as we, we model something that, that is more like cohabitating in churches than it is like like marriage, like, like committing ourselves to one body for the purpose of glorifying um, Christ. The very thought of, uh, of commitment and submission and accountability, um, they sometimes grate against our personalities as Americans, right? We are a very um, individualistic, um, a, a very independent-minded people. Um, most of the time, uh, the idea of committing ourselves to something over a, a, a long period of time seems like it's, it's going to give up something about autonomy, right? And, and so um, th- it, it's also been said that, that some people are just skeptical of the church. Like, like when it comes to institutions and organizations, like who wouldn't be a little, a little sketchy about it? Like, like what, you know, what's going on there and, and why should I, I be part of that? What, what is it that would, um, that would keep me there? Um, we feel much safer in our own distance, um, that I can just participate when I want, how I want, and, and move on and, and do it that way. Um, for many, uh, we, we bring our own uh, American consumer mindset into it, and we think about all the, the benefits of a church. And so as long as, as it's benefiting me, I'll be there. If, if the, you know, the, the teaching's right, if the music sounds good, if, if, if it's stuff that I, I enjoy, um, then I see the benefit in it. But if, if it's not there for me, then I'll move on and I'll look for it somewhere else. Um, we, we see the church as a place that meets our needs instead of the other way around. When, when really we're called to, to serve in a church, we're called to be the ones who meet the needs. And let's, let's just be honest, like it's really easy to be critical, right? Like um, there is no place I've ever gone that I couldn't tell you something I would change about it. There's no place I've ever gone that I, I didn't think, oh, man, I'd really prefer it this way. Or, I think I'd do it better if I had my say in how things go, right? Like, we can all be, be critical. We can all see things that, that aren't right. Um, uh, Billy Graham once famously said, and I think this is a, a retelling of, a, of, of a Charles Spurgeon, but um, he said, if, if you find the perfect church, don't you dare join it uh, because you'll spoil it. Right? <laughs> when it comes right down to it, the problem with churches is people, right? There's people in there, and so they're all going to be imperfect. And, and if you ever found somehow the perfect group of people, don't bring yourself to it, because I know I, I would mess it up. <laughs> I would spoil it. Uh, I, I think that, that that's a very funny thing to say, but it's not all that helpful either. <laughs> um, many will, will say, I love, the, I, love the, I love Christ. I just, I just don't really like the church, Right? I've heard that many a time. And when I think about that myself, if someone were to come up to me today and say, Sean, I really love you, but I don't really love your wife. I mean, she, she can kind of grate on me. Um, I, would, I would take great offense to that. Um, and I think, that, I think that Christ does too. He calls the church his bride. And so in order to love Christ, we have to love the church. We, we have to find a place where we can, we can serve and we can um, be com- uh, in, in community with like-minded believers for the sake of, of, of Christ. Um, I actually think that, that most of the things that we say about the church are, are not only unhelpful, they're inaccurate. Uh, many times you'll hear, um, where do you go to church, right? Or uh, uh, where is your church, right? 
I'm generally talking about a building someplace. Um, but that's not what the church is. The church is the people. Um, a, a much more accurate saying would be, um, where do you meet with your church? Um, where, where, where is it that you guys go together to, to meet up as the church, right? Um, because the, the church is, uh, is a, a congregation. It's not a destination, right? It's, it's not a destination. It's a congregation. It's a people. Um, that's what the church really is. And, and so um, when we look in Scripture and we see the word church, it's almost always the, the word ecclesia. Um, it, it's a, a Greek word that means an assembly, a gathering, a group of people coming together. Um, and, and that's really what the church is. Um, there was a time when, when the, the church understood this. Um, the church knew that it was a gathering of people because we see um, in the, the early stages of, of New Testament churches in the book of Acts, um, over and over and over we see them meeting in the temple courts. We see them meeting in synagogues and in houses and in rented spaces. And we see them meeting in, in jail cells at times. Right? In, in Acts 16, you have this, this story of uh, Luke recording for us Paul and Silas being in the, the pr middle of a prison, singing and, uh, hymns uh, to God, worshiping right there in a jail cell. The church broke out because two, two believers were there together, and they were worshiping God uh, together. Um, dating the church is, is out of step with God's word. Flat and simple. I mean, it's, it's just out of step with what we see in the New Testament. Meaningful membership in a, in a local church is, is critical to our lives as followers. Critical. Um, that, that I, I want you to think about the, the, the commitment to a, a church and, and the way that it should be a high priority in our lives. It, it should actually be a priority by which all of the other priorities kind of shape themselves around. Um, where we work, um, how we go about um, our, our lives. Um, should be shaped around the function and the mission of the church. And so I, I want to show you that in the middle of all of our, our busy lives and our families, um, that, that commitment to one another, commitment to the church, is designed by God to be this transformative reality within our lives and in our families. That, that the church should be something that, that transforms us as we interact with it. And so I hope to give you a snapshot of a community um, over these, these next two weeks um, that you will say, I need that in my life. I, I need that kind of community. I need that kind of interaction. I need that, that kind of commitment to a body in my life. Biblical membership is, is an essential trait of a biblical church because followers of Christ are not church avoiders. They're not church attenders. Um, Followers of Christ aren't church hoppers or shoppers. Followers of Christ, biblically, are church members. They are members of a body. They belong to a church. And so if you have a Bible or a device with a Bible app, I'm going to invite you to open it up. 1 Corinthians 12 is where we're going to be this morning. Um, if you find it in your, your New Testament, newer part of the Bible, go toward the right uh, as you open up your Bible. Um, you're going to look in between Romans and Galatians. You're going to find two letters there. Um, first and Second Corinthians, we're in the first one, then toward the end of it, uh, First Corinthians 12. If you need a uh, table of contents, don't be afraid to use it. Uh, you should find some Bibles in the, uh, the uh, seats in, uh, around you if you need one. First uh, Corinthians 12, uh, we're going to start in verse 12, and I'm going to read down through there. And as I do that, uh, I'm going to invite you guys to do something along with me. You guys can just count the number of times that you see the words body, member, or part. Okay, body, member, or part. Count how many times that's in there, because it's going to be a bunch. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 12, he says, Just as the body is one and has many members, all members of the body, though many, are one body. So it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we are all made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing? Or where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranges the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If, if all were a single member, 
where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on, and on those parts of the body we think, uh, that we think less honorable, we bestow greater honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that uh, there may be no division in the body, but that the, the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Did you guys keep track of how many times there? 18, 29, closer, 35, really close. I counted several times. I came up with 36 um, most of the time. I, it's, it's a lot. That, I mean, that's the point, right? It's, it's a whole lot that he's talking about, this, this idea of the church being bodies, members, parts of this whole joined together, right? Um, this is a, a section where Paul is describing the function of the church, the way that the church works, um, the way that we should see the church and, and really view the church, and, and that there are all of these individuals within it, but they are all members of one body. One uh, collaboration together um, in this picture. And, and really, anywhere you see the word member used in, in our society, um, whether you're talking about the member of uh, a club or a team or a big box store, anywhere you see it, the etymology of that word, the history of that word actually goes back to this idea in Christianity of being a member of the body. Um, that is where that, that idea comes from. Um, that, that members or parts or, or you know, pieces of a body are, are made up in, in the church. Um, the, 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 this is the, the functional point that, that Paul is making here. And, and uh, I know you've probably heard me say this before, but, but the church isn't a team that you join. Right? It's, not a, it's not a club where you pay, pay dues. It is a body you belong to. Um, it is a, a sense of belonging that is supposed to come with this idea of being a member of a church. It's not a team that we join. It's a body we belong to. Um, it's at this point that, that many Christians will nod along with me. And they'll say, yep, got it, body. We're part of the body, got it. Um, but you mean like big C body, like the body of Christ, right? Everybody, everywhere, all, all of the Christians in the world, part of the body. Um, that's not what I'm actually talking about at all. Um, I, and I don't think that's what the Bible teaches. And I'm going to try to lay this out for you in, a, in an evidence-based factor today. And so I'll give you three pieces of evidence that, that each and every person who is a Christian should be part of a local body of believers in this way. Ready? Um, exhibit A. <laughs> if I'm laying it out like in a courtroom. Um, the Bible expects followers to identify with a gathering of believers. Um, there are, are certain times when the Bible refers to the universal church, all the believers everywhere as a church, and then there are other times when it refers to little c, individual, local churches in different places, right? But the overwhelming majority of all the times we see ecclesia used, the word that we translate to church, it is in local bodies. Actually, it's 90 out of 114 times that we see the word church, it's talking about a local church, an individual church in a certain place with certain members of that church. Um, here, let me give you some examples. Uh, look at uh, the beginning of 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. Paul is writing to um, this group of believers. Paul, called to be uh, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ and our brother Sosthenes to the church of God that is in Corinth, right? So he's writing this letter to a group of believers in a certain place. Um, he says, to those sanctified in Jesus Christ, called to be saints together with all those in every place called, who, who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, okay? So he says, these are, this is the, the church that I'm writing to right here, part of the great body of Christ, right? And so he's, he's, both things are there, but he's saying I'm writing to these believers at this place in this little c church. Um, or, or Paul later on, as he's writing at the end of a letter to, to the Romans, um, he, he uh, writes this in Romans 16, chapter, uh, chapter 16, verse 3. 
Um, he says, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ. They risked their lives for me, not only uh, I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are great, grateful to them, right? So all the churches, right? So it's, it's more than one church, so it's not talking about the global body, but all these local churches that they had, had helped. And so he says, greet also the church that meets in their house, right? So again, the, the believers that are identified by the fact that they gather together in the house of Priscilla and Aquila, these Christians who meet at that house. That's who I'm talking about, that church. And, and over and over and over, we see this all throughout the New Testament as Paul is writing all of these different churches, right? All these different local bodies in order to send instruction or guidance or answer questions or give um, encouragement to all of these different people in all of these different places, these different local bodies of Christ because followers um, are supposed to identify with a local gathering, a local church. Um, where is it, just think about this for a moment, where is it that if Paul were writing you, he would send that letter? Because it'd have to be somewhere, right? He's expecting that each and every one of us as followers are part of a, of a local body of believers, that we're part of a small c church in the global church. Um, how about some more evidence? Uh, exhibit B. <laughs> Uh, the example, or the Bible expects followers to be served by and serve under local church leaders. We see this in, uh, in the book of Hebrews. Um, Hebrews 13 gives us this uh, interesting picture of commitment um, within uh, the, the, the context of a church. He says this, he says, Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. Now, that's, that's a challenging verse for most Christians to read, right? Because it's, it's telling you to submit to someone else. And I understand that. But this goes both ways, right? Because um, right after he tells Christians to submit to biblical authority, leadership, right? He, he tells the leaders, because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account, right? Um, now, th that's, a, that's an important thing to, to imagine in our minds. Like, like when we think about uh, submitting to someone else, we always think about what we're giving up. But, but what Paul does is, or, well, the writer of Hebrews, um, it, it, he, he ties that directly into what, what that leader is giving up for you. And that is that that, that leader, um, some translations say, they keep watch over your souls, Right? There's, there's, a, there's a seriousness, a, a, a scariness to this um, for a church leader, um, for myself and, and for the, the elders of, the, of this body. That's, that's a, a striking verse that, that we are, are called to give an account for the people who are part of this local body. Um, that, that we are going to have a, to give an account before God for each and every person who is under our care. And so... Two questions that flow directly out of a verse like that is, if, if it's not a small C church, if it's the big C church, then are, are members of the body of Christ supposed to uh, just submit to every leader everywhere in every church always? Well, that doesn't make any sense. And are leaders within the context of a church supposed to look after every believer everywhere always? No, of course not. Like, neither of those things make any sense, right? So, so what he's talking about in the context of, of this, this writing is, is people in the local context of a church. That, that the, the members of a church are supposed to submit to the leaders and that those leaders are supposed to, to look after the flock of God with such care and they have to know who the members of that church are. Um, because if, if, if we're going to be held account before God for, for the way that we care for his church, we better know who the people are within that church. Um, we, we read this, uh, this verse uh, a couple weeks ago when we were talking about leadership. Um, but Acts 20, verse 28, Paul is telling, again, elders of a church, the church at Ephesus, keep watch over yourselves and all the flock which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Um, again, um, the apostle Peter and in 1 Peter 5, 2, is writing to church elders. And he says, be shepherds of God's flock who is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you're willing, as God wants you to be. And so it, it is imperative not only to belong to a church, but that that, that church knows who belongs to it. Um, people that, that you trust to handle the word of God, 
people that, that you trust to, uh, to, to pray for, for you and to, to look after you if you've gone astray. Um, that it's important to, to have those people in your life who will keep watch over you as those who will have to give an account before the Lord. So the Bible expects us to identify with the church. The Bible expects us to be served by and to serve under um, biblical leadership and exhibit C. Uh, C. Uh, <laughs> the Bible expects followers to generously give graciously serve and communally live within the context of a local church. The church exists for a, a mission larger than any one of us, right? We understand that. Um, that, that in order to, for it to be a gathering of the church, there has to be more than just you. <laughs> and so while you individually um, are a member of, a, a, of the, the big C church, and hopefully a member of a, a little C church, um, you, are, you are also not the church all by yourself. Right? There's, there's something much greater than, than any one of us. And every time that we come together and we gather with the church, we're reminded of that. And we, we see the people around us and the way that, that we're called to, to serve the people around us, whether we're called to love the people around us, we're called to, to be in community with the people um, that God has placed us in, in community with, which is why you can't be part of a Jama church, right? That's, that's not a thing. Um, while... One Sunday, it might be just fine that you, you turn on a, a sermon because you're snowed into your house or something like that. Um, there's no such thing as belonging to a, a remote church online, um, that, that you're going to miss out on something in, in, in the context of that. And, and I have a hundred different reasons why I, can, I could prove that to you really quickly. Um, they sound like this. Love one another, honor one another, build up one another, accept, encourage, admonish, con consider, uh, submit to, bear with, forgive, comfort, exhort, serve, pray for, show hospitality to, um, live in harmony with one another, right? You can't do that online. You just can't. Um, that, that's going to take actually living communally with people. It's going to take being in fellowship with people. It's going to take coming together and, and rubbing up against one another. Not like that, but like, you know, being in, being in community with one another, right? <laughs> Sometimes you wish you could take words back. Uh, now, now that you, uh, you see a, a partial list, right, of, of all of those things that we're called to do uh, with one another, um, you, you, could, you could look throughout the New Testament and you'll find uh, many more than just that, that partial list, but you'll also find those repeated once and again and again and again to different churches, different local churches within the context of, of God's big C church. It's why you can't accomplish the will of God for you as a church member in your pajamas. Um, these things uh, must be practiced in, in community with one another, intentionally um, fellowshipping with each other, and life-on-life -life discipleship as we, we learn what it looks like to, to live with each other in the context of the local church. Um, these things, they, ha they have to be practiced, right? They, ha they have to be lived out in our lives. Um, the church is on mission to share the gospel with, with a, a watching world around us, but also to care for one another in the context of the local church. Look back at, at 1 Corinthians uh, 12, uh, 24 again. Paul says it this way. He says, uh, But God has so, so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Right? The, this, this is the picture that, that Paul is trying to give us here of a people who are so bound together that it's like being members of one body. Right? If you've ever had an injury, you know that all of a sudden all of the other parts of your body start to ache because they're compensating for the injury. Right? In, in the same way, we're supposed to live in one body in such a way that if one part of us is suffering, all of us are suffering along with them. Or that if one part is rejoicing, we're all celebrating along with them. So when you rejoice, I am, am over the moon for you. Right? Uh, when, when you are, are hurting, my heart breaks for you. That, that I see myself in your shoes as, as you go through everything in life. I'm feeling the weight of your hardship and your struggles, and, and I'm feeling your, your celebrations and, and your, your promotions, right? That, that, that the heart of the gospel is that, that Jesus, he takes our hardships, 
our struggles, our sin, right? And, and he gives us all of his benefit. Um, he gives us all of his, his righteousness. He generously gives us all the benefits that are due him to each and every one of us. And so this is the heart of the gospel, that, that we suffer with one another, that we celebrate with one another. It's also one of the reasons that, that every week we gather together around the Lord's table, right? For this, this purpose, that we preach the gospel to ourselves and to each other as we, we take these, these emblems that, that represent his body given for us, his blood shed for our sins. And so I want to uh, invite up Charles. He's going to lead us into communion this morning with the Lord and, and with each other. And then I'll come back up with a challenge for you. Good morning. Get to be the rock star this morning, like Sean. Nice microphone. But. In Psalms 8, David provided why God invested so much of himself into humanity's brokenness. David recognized the unworthy position those sinners hold in God's view. God cherishes every person. He sees eternal worth in each and every one of us. The writer of Hebrew read David's um, words and saw something more than a dismal description of a hopeless sinner. The Hebrew author describes the glory of God's Son who willingly chose to come into a broken world and suffer for every sinner. Listen to this description in Hebrews 2. It has been testified somewhere, what is man? You are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him. You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with the glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside of his control. At present, we do not yet get to see anything in subjection to him. But we see him who for a little while was made lower than any angels, a man named Jesus. He was crowned with the glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. The only crown Jesus ever wore was made of thorns. It did not bring him honor before the people. Rather, it exemplified his pain and, his hallowed, and hallowed his shame. It was through his suffering that Jesus received a spiritual crown. No human eye has ever seen. It is this crown that belongs to the king of kings. It adorns the head of the ones, the one whose face outshines the sun. It is promised to the one seated at the right hand of God. So let's take this time of remembrance to recall that Jesus' coronation began on a hill outside of Jerusalem walls. The bread, his body, the cup, invoke a mental image of his head with that thorn of crowns bleeding down his face. He was wounded and, believer, and bleeding for that, so that all believers might find grace in his presence. Shall we pray? Father God, I'm just so humbly thankful for all that you do for us. I thank you for this time of remembrance that you, you put before us each and every week that we can come and just focus solely upon you and um, your mission, your body, your love for us. Just pray over each and every one of us here that we would examine ourselves and put everything at your feet. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
So as I said, I want to, uh, I want to close with a challenge this morning. Um, I'll begin with a question. Are you gathering together, committed to gathering together, um, every single week that you're able to, with a group of believers to study the Word of God and to live out the will of God? Are, are, are you committed to gathering together with a, a group of believers to study the Word of God and to live out the will of God? Um, biblical membership it is a, a meaningful commitment together in, in Christian community. Um, we, we come together in, in service to and in worship of Christ. Uh, the local church, by design, um, is made up of, of members committed to, to one another. Um, members who, who are committed to caring for and celebrating with and, and worshiping God together, uh, praying and discussing and, and, uh, and going through all of the things that, that God has for us right here and right now. And as we've been preparing um, as, as elders and, and uh, the elders and I um, for this moment where, where we would talk about the, the sincere desire we have for, for this church to join in formal uh, membership, we've been kind of thinking how, through how that would, would work and, and how we might partner together here at this local church for the body of Christ. For the, for the mission of Christ, for the sake of, of the gospel in this community. And so um, next week, what we're going to do together, um, hopefully, uh, God willing, um, is that we're going to inaugurate the first formal membership of this church, um, the founding membership here at, at Oikos, and, and uh, identify with this local body. Um, so for, for each and every person who's here and, and each and every person who might um, join online, um, our, our prayer is that, that this week you would think through, is this the church, is this the, the local gathering that God has called me to? Um, is this the place where I am going to place membership? Is this the place that I'm going to partner with other believers for the sake of the gospel? And, and uh, in the meantime, I would just um, encourage you to, to pray through that. To think through that and, and to decide if that is is where you are um, now and, and if so I would ask you to join and participate um, to, to be a part of this part of the body of Christ and so um, in between now and then um, if you have any question um, please come to me please uh, see one of the the elders um, if you have a question um, please participate tonight in a, in a home group where you can uh, you can ask any question that you might have uh, when it comes to that um, the, the gospel beckons each and every one of us um, to look outwardly as, as Christian community as well. And so um, we, we don't come together for the sake of just the people in this room, but we're coming together for the sake of the community that is around us, for the people that God has placed all around us and in our lives so that we might take the gospel to them. And so we want this week to, to think toward what it will look like for us to partner in that endeavor. Um, to be ready to take the gospel to each and every person that God has placed in our lives because God has designed the local church to be the place where we experience his goodness and the fullness of what it looks like to live out his love to the community that we're called to. That is the beauty of the body of Christ. Let me pray for us. Father God, as we look forward to this, um, to this coming week and, and everything that you have for us, um, Lord, it's just my sincere prayer that, that in each and every one of our lives, um, we are asking, is this the body that you have united us with? Um, Lord, and if that is the case, then, then Father, as we come together next week and, and we make those, um, those commitments, Father, we just ask that you would give us a peace about um, coming together, about being a, a local church for the sake of the gospel and for the, the glory of your name, and for the community um, that we have with one another. Lord, uh, as we go about all the things that we have this week, we just ask, ask you to make us mindful of, of this, um, this question on our hearts, that we wouldn't come back next week not having thought about it, 
But Father, we would, we would prayerfully consider it and come to a conclusion this week. Father, I, I pray for, for each and every person in this room that they are um, coming to know and love and grow in your son more fully. And so, Father, as we come to this time of, of reflection and response, uh, Father, we just ask that if there's even one that doesn't know the goodness of Jesus, uh, that this would be the moment of salvation for them, um, that they would step out in faith and, and believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that follow him into the waters of baptism. All, all sins washed away, the gift of the Holy Spirit living inside of them, that, that moment in time where we can plant our flag in the ground knowing that your Son has forgiven us. And Father, as we, as we come to the end of service today, we just ask you to uh, glorify yourself through us. Father, send us out on mission to, to reach and to share the, the love that we have found in you through Christ. It's in his name that we pray. If you'll stand with me, we're going to have a final song. And uh, again, if you have any question when it comes to um, membership or what it looks like or what it would be like in, within this body, please um, seek out one of the, uh, the elders. Um, seek out myself. Um, if if uh, you're here today and for the first time you're hearing the gospel and wanting to respond to it, um, I, I would ask you to, to, to search me out. Um, find me and, and I would be happy to see what the next step is for you. Let's, let's sing as we uh, close out service today.